Hi rabbits, uh, Head Hair Phoebe here, uh, doing another rabbit remedy for you today. This one's on mentors and idols. The idea of mentors and idols is not something that we talk about very much in some of the places where perhaps we should. When we're using mental health services or working in mental health services, we don't seem to talk very much about uh, th this idea and this strategy uh, for recovering our well-being. Um, I've worked in services for five years um, as a peer support worker and mentors and idols were a, a really important component to, to my journey when I was recovering my well-being from my, from my breakdown. Mentors and idols were enormously important to me and still are and I believe they always will be. And yet we don't see those terms in our, you know, care plans. Uh, we're, we're not having those discussions. And mentors and idols as, as a well-being strategy does not seem to be formalised in any way in, a, in clinical care models, uh, which I think is a shame because uh, it can be very, very helpful and powerful uh, for some people. And it, it would certainly was for me. So as usual, today's rabbit remedy has uh, three key points. Uh, to, to, to help us along uh, to explore this idea. So point one, know the difference between mentors and, and idols. A mentor is someone uh, that, that, that you would know. So it is someone who you know could, could be a family member, a colleague, uh, someone from your church, a uh, hobby group. It is a real person. It's someone that you know. And it's someone that you, you you admire and you want to learn from because they've had some success and accomplishments in things that you also like. And you would like to go down that path and you feel there's so much learning you can do from this person. And you want to really engage um, in a mentoring relationship um, that will develop you as a person and you want to have those exchanges. Uh, sometimes we do this naturally sort of in peer spaces but mentorship, there is a fly in here. We're going to, <laughs> I'm going to carry on. So mentorship is, a, is, is really a relationship. We have a mentor, mentee and it is something that is massively beneficial and there is a mutual element to that too like like peer support it can be enormously helpful for the mentor to be in that relationship as well and so that is a very um, it is a productive practical intellectual <laughs> intangible useful and fruitful thing um, that you're engaging in and that's mentorship and that's a mentor an idol it can be someone that, that you know, like I would say I idolise my mother, um, but an idol often can be someone that you don't know. So it could be a famous person, reality TV star, political uh, figure, historical figure. And an idol is someone who probably offers you a, an inspiration uh, in, in the thing that they are known for. So it's a, uh, it can be uh, your muse. Uh, they have qualities or achievements that inspire you. Uh, you don't know them. You're probably not very likely to be engaging with them in a personal face-to-face -face relationship or any intimate mentoring relationship, but they are someone that can help you. You can read about them. Uh, you perhaps can see them on YouTube, uh, read their books, their research, and our idols can just provide us with, um, you know, a compass. This is where I'd like to go. And it doesn't mean that you have to <laughs> mimic exactly this person and, uh, you know, imitate uh, their every move, although the <laughs> imitation is the best form of flattery, but you're not, you're not trying to do that. You want to um, develop as a person. And so it, it's more that they have uh, something that you want to emulate. So that's a, a, just a very, very basic differences between mentors and, and idols. So step two, You have to make a decision, <laughs> having already made a decision that you would like to have a mentor on idol, which I think is a decision that um, it should 
it just be a precursor to all of this. Um, it will, we should have mentors and idols. I, I'm relatively conflicted about saying the word should because it's not a, a word I like to use that often. Um, but to articulate that better, I've never met lots of people I go, you should not have a mentor or idol. <laughs> so in that sense, we perhaps should have them. So step two is about deciding after your commitment, oh, I'm going to have a mentor or an idols in my life, who is accessible and willing. Because it can be wrenching when we <laughs> choose a mentor that we really want to engage with and it's, it's not possible for whatever reason, uh, logistics, uh, time, uh, of distance or you know, for whatever reason uh, we, we can't get the person that, that we want. So. So think of someone who is accessible and, and, and willing. Okay, so that's that's really important. Otherwise, it's never really going to work and, and, and you won't get the benefit out of it. So um, accessibility and willingness uh, for the people that you've selected. And finally, number three. Decision based on... Who is my mentor for what and why? I can apply that to idols as well. Um, this, this bit works well uh, for, for mentors because it, the suggestion that was uh, uh, presented to me when I looked at this years ago that uh, you should never have more than five because it can it get, get confusing and that three to four is a is a sweet spot and, and some people will only need one and you have a personal one and you, you might have your hobby based vocational or professional one and um three is good because sometimes some people do have a job that blends two different things and that the, you, you really would need two and because you have a personal mentor as well you, you end up with three and uh, i i have four just because in the lived experience workforce there's a massive blend between our personal and political being being a peer worker and outing yourself with that lived experience, but doing other professional things that you need skills uh, as well. And then I've got a, a personal mentor, and then there are other, there's other mentors in areas of your work that are really important to you and you're committed to knowing about, but you don't know as much about, and then that more dry uh, area. And it's really just not your skill set, and you just have that extra mentor because you, you feel you should be doing doing that, and you can find someone to help you with that. And the secondary part of that tip is don't just choose mentors um, that you always agree with, you hang on their um, every word and, and make your their opinion your opinions. Whatever it says, like, that's my opinion now because it's great. Because, and there are always people, I mean, lots of people like that, where I just think everything they say is gold and I'm probably never going to think um, otherwise. And there are other times uh, where there's a blend where I... 90, 80, 90% 90 of the time I think everything they say is gold and it would generally be, yeah, I think I share that that opinion. But there are times where I go, no, I'm going another way on that one. But everything else in that relationship and in my admiration for them and everything that I've learned and their successes and then my accomplishments, I'm still, it is a ballpark that this person is just what they say and what they do and how they do it is gold. But there will be these instances where I'm like, oh, I, just agree, I just disagree on that one. Um, so it's really good. Uh, to have at least one of your mentors uh, that is someone that you uh, can quite frequently uh, disagree with because when you have those uh, disagreements and those really challenging interactions uh, like intellectually you know challenging stimulating conversations that's the sweet spot for learning because when you get an insight uh, to what's behind a difference in opinion and what's behind somebody else's opinion and what's behind your opinion. There's a zone there of learning that is uh, unexplainable. That's my rabbit remedy for today. Rabbit out. <laughs>